This is Rock and Roll English. Real people, real English. Here's your host, Martin Johnson. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Rock and Roll English, episode number 201, baby. Oh, yeah. A new era, you could say, in Rock and Roll English. Well, not that much is changing. It will still be conversations with me and friends talking about poos, vaginas, penises and everything like that. But remember, we will now only have two Monday podcasts a month. Actually, a minimum of two Monday podcasts a month. Um, As I mentioned in the very short podcast on Thursday last week, um, I need some time to actually try and grow the podcast so that I can do this full time. And then, I don't know, I might make a podcast every day for everyone if I can just concentrate on this. But I need some time to actually do that. So for now, we will have only two Monday podcasts a month. But if you would like more, or if you would like to listen to more than 500 extra episodes that have been created in the Rock and Roll English family, you can join the family when it opens in September. At the moment, you can just register your interest online. So notice I said register your interest, nothing else. And you will also get my favourite episode of the 500. Um, So you can get that by going to the Rock and Roll English website and clicking on family area okay and then there is a link anyway in today's episode i speak to the hell raiser about how old you need to be to do stuff in england because it changes in different countries doesn't it how old you need to be to go to school to drink and this kind of stuff anyway here is the conversation i will speak to you all again at the end happy listening Hellraiser, how are you today? Hello, Martin. I'm very good. How about you? Always fantastic. Always fantastic. We've started a a new era now, like the next 200 episodes. You know, we're going to climb the mountain again. Are you in? I'm in. You're putting your best foot forward for the next 200. (laughs) I like it. Like playing my strongest card. Sure. Exactly. Yeah. Coming out fighting. I love it. That's right. Um, Anyway, Hellraiser, how do we usually start the show? Nothing's changed in that department. We're still following the same routine. Routines are important in life. I mean, you're not going to like ask me how I am properly. I've got a bit of a stomach ache, actually. (laughs) Well, my first question was, "How are you today?" You could have told me about the stomach ache. Admittedly, I I wouldn't have been interested, but you could have told me. Well, I don't think so. I think it was all about you being fantastic. You didn't really ask me how I was as a. (laughs) As I am today, and I'm um, I'm not okay. I've got a stomach ache, and stomach's a bit gripey. It's a bit moody, a moody belly. Okay, so a moody belly, like a uh, upset stomach. Um, I mean, there is nothing worse, is there, when you ask someone how they are? You stop in the street. How are you? Okay, yeah, yeah. You, I've got a stomach ache. You just think, why? Why are you telling me that? I really am not interested. <laughs> Well, that's just a, a sign of, of your uh, your personality, your character, your character flaws. Nothing to do with me. Mm, so your flaws, there's some nice vocabulary like your defects, let's say. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yes, we can we can start with a review as per normal. Yes, correct. Um, we are starting with a review. Do you think we have a review? Yeah, I think so. I'm pretty confident. Yeah, I kind of gave it away in my answer there, didn't I? Um, yes, we do. And it's from um, Adam Drag. I'm pretty confident with that pronunciation. Um, and it says, I've been listening to this podcast for months and I can say without any doubt that this is the best English podcast in the world. Need proof? Here you go. About a year ago, I tried to get a band seven score for each score skill in the IELTS exam which just so people know is an English exam but I failed more than once luckily I found rock and roll English listened to more than a hundred episodes and got the score which I needed if I hadn't found this podcast I would not have got the score I dreamed about some lovely third conditional there as well thank you Martin Corporal Coma Boom Boom and the Hellraiser you're awesome guys um few people missing from the list but never mind um, keep on rocking. P.S. The 
Stag Part 2 was great. I would love to see more of those premium episodes. Oh, wow. Thank you very much for that review, Adam. Um, that premium episode, I, I think about 10 people um, <laughs> bought that, which was great. Um, so, you know, get really big now. I thought this is it now. This is going to... This is going to boom the sales of this. Look the next day. I actually bought it as well just to see if it was working. And that took up about 50% of the sales for a long time. <laughs> I'm guessing your mum brought nine of them. <laughs> yeah, I bought one and my mum bought nine. <laughs> and Adam Drag bought one. So thank you very much for that. Good man. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, Adam. Anyway, Hellraiser, do you know what we're talking about today? No, you've kept your cards close to your chest on this one. I'm excited, yep. though. Some lovely rock and roll vocabulary. If you keep your cards close to your chest, you're keeping it a bit of a secret. Um, well, I don't know why. I was just thinking the other day about, you know, age and stuff like that. Mm. You know, we're not getting any younger, are mm. we, Hellraiser? And I, I, I looked back at my life and I thought about all the times, you know, when, you, when you're young and you've got another milestone, you think, oh, like when I'm 18, I'll be able to drink. You know, when I'm this i'll be able to do that so i thought let's look at all of these things in england okay look at the age in which um you're able to do things so for example school education um actually starts in england at like four doesn't it four or five i believe yeah primary school four yeah that's it F four in um england what do you think hellraiser too early because here in italy it's six oh, i mean yeah it's just a waste of time start at 15 have your childhood. <laughs> sure. Um, well, I personally think it might be a bit too early because when I was in primary school at four, I specifically remember one of the kids, Charles Hogan, not sure if he's listening, um, <laughs> came out of the toilet um, because he didn't quite know how to wipe his ass um, yet. So he had done a big shit. He was crying and said that, I don't remember the specific words, but I think it was something along the lines of, there's a big poo there, whilst crying, and had his trousers and pants round his ankles. So we were all looking at his penis, <laughs> we, we, which was a great memory, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, that sounds great. That sounds, that sounds really lovely. What a heartwarming memory that you've got there. Yeah, so, so maybe it's not such a good idea. I don't know, I don't think I'd actually mastered ass wiping at four either it was quite it took me quite a while to to grasp that so to grasp it to fully understand what to okay. do it's a difficult technique is it <laughs> i'm not sure on that one pretty straightforward I, I think i thought it was my technique for i don't know the first five years of my life i'm not sure was to sit on the toilet and just shout the word finished as loud as I could in, in a specific tone as well of like finished mum I'm finished <laughs> that is so weird <laughs> literally till I was like red in the face in fact even now there's nothing more annoying than calling someone that can't hear you when you're wanting them to wipe your ass <laughs> I still call Mrs Rock and Roll English now <laughs> <laughs> do it in Italian now finito <laughs> <laughs> that's good yeah um, although when I do call her in the other room sometimes just because I can't be asked to get up so I can't be asked I haven't got the energy and I just shout and then she I think she can hear me she just doesn't want to get up and I think I'm not moving so I'm going to just keep shouting louder and louder and then I start to get a bit of a headache and think I think I'm just going to have to get up now yeah I don't go for a little lie down <laughs> I, I get overtired by shouting too much like a like a baby yeah you haven't really, you haven't really like matured that much since those times, have you? Like physically and mentally or emotionally, any of it. Um, I mentioned this in a podcast with PT Teach recently. When I was five or six, I was built like a brick shit house. Um, so that's a way to describe someone extremely muscly. I don't think I've ever been in such great physical condition as, as when I was five or six. <laughs> I've honestly never heard anybody say that. that. Harking back to when they were five and saying, "Yeah, those were the glory days." That's when I was in good shape. Th those really were for me. For me, um, I remember all the girls looking at me like, "Oh, look at that! Look at that man there!" <laughs> all the other five-year-old girls, 
or older girl. Yeah, yeah. They were like, oh, he's a real man. He's a real man. <laughs> Just my, my muscles haven't really grown since then is the problem. But now now I'm 35 and it is a bit of a problem, I must admit. Um, so moving on to the next bit, we have um, criminal responsibility. OK, because when you're 10, apparently you can be charged for criminal offences, which I didn't know. I thought you had to be a bit older. And it immediately got me thinking of why you are still a free man hellraiser because the amount of things that used to happen when we were kids um i remember walking home with you once and there was a big stack of newspapers so a big stack like lots of newspapers ready to be delivered the next day and then you picked up the stack and then we woke up in the morning with about 500 newspapers in the room (laughs) i was going to deliver them myself i just wanted to do a public service Mm, i'm not 100 percent sure if if that was the case um we had a good read of those newspapers in the morning though didn't we good reading practice that lots good. of reading practice they're all the yeah. same as well weren't they so we were just checking for errors printing errors i was also when i when i was younger i um i stole a pair of uh knickers from a uh from a shop when i was with my mum i think i was about six years old wait just so people know knickers are women's underwear in england yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you were six and you stole knickers and you were with your mum. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what was going on. I can't explain it. Of all the things to steal, you stole w- women's underwear. Yeah. Um, was it like a birthday present for your mum or? <laughs> <laughs> that was some kind of, must have been some kind of gift. I mean, I'm a giving person. I was probably going to, I don't know, give them to my nan or something. <laughs> What six-year-old buys underwear for their nan? So nan in England is grandmother, by the way. I I didn't buy them. I stole them. <laughs> Even nicer. Hi, nan. I've got you some underwear, which already is very strange. And then you tell her, but I didn't buy them. I stole them. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Probably wouldn't even have wrapped them. Just get, just scrunched up. Put them in her hand. There you go, nan. Enjoy. <laughs> Yeah, so it scrunched up when you sort of um, sort of grab it and they're all not not ironed, let's say, maybe the opposite of ironed. Do you remember what you actually did with them, though? Because I am interested. Do you still have them? Is it like a trophy you have in your bedroom? I framed them. Yeah, with a date. <laughs> My nan signed it. <laughs> For first date of being a criminal. <laughs> no, actually, my uh, my mum went mad outside. Well, I think because we, we got home and she went mad and then uh, angry that I'd stolen something and it made me actually take them back to the shop. <laughs> Can so. you imagine that? You work in a shop and then some six-year-old comes up and says, I'm really sorry, but I stole these women, <laughs> these underwear. <laughs> she did actually make me apologize as well. It's a good life lesson. Thanks, mum, if you're listening. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure if that really deterred you. So deterred you, stopped you, because certainly with the newspaper incident, and that happened on more than one occasion. Uh, yeah, I had a bit of a problem, I think, just with uh, <laughs> stealing literature. Local news. I just, I just got quite into local news. Local news. Yeah, really, really interesting. Um, I must admit, got really nerdy on the uh, our local paper was the Essex Chronicle, wasn't it? It was, yeah. When you got your picture in that, oh, that was that was important, wasn't well, it? That's, that's interesting, isn't it? Because you did actually have your picture in in the Essex Chronicle, didn't? Did you not? You know what? As soon as I said that, I thought, oh, for fuck's sake, why did I mention that? Shall we we explore that a little bit? Um, I think it has been explored before on yeah, the podcast. But this is a new chapter. We can just give a quick summary. A quick summary, please. Go for it. Um, of basically there was this competition of the best looking man in town. I'm going to stop you there. It was called it was called the face of Essex. <laughs> OK, the face of Essex competition. I don't remember the name. Um, <laughs> I was sitting in my house one day. Then the local paper got delivered by the actual paper boy and not someone that had just stolen the newspaper. And I saw that and I thought, oh, this will be funny. Imagine if there's someone I know in this. That will be hilarious. Mm-hmm. I open it up and there is just a picture of me, a school picture as well. <laughs> all, all of the other pictures were people, you know, big muscly, 
and stuff like this. And then there was just me with my end of year <laughs> school picture with my smile on there. In your, oh, in your school uniform. That was amazing. <laughs> Not one of the best moments in my life, um, I must admit. It took me a, many years to shake that off. So to shake that off for people to forget about that. And well, I mean, people haven't forgot about that because 20 years later, we're talking about it still. Never going to forget that one. Never. Never going to forget what, that one. But moving on, Hellraiser, quickly. Okay. Yeah, sure. Um, so 16, apparently. I didn't know this, but um, because you're not old enough to drink yet, obviously. But you can apparently drink a beer um, in a pub with someone over 18 if you're having a meal. Okay. Correct. Um, I'm surprised we didn't know that because when we were... 16 we were doing absolutely anything to try and get served so when i say to get served i mean for like people to sell us alcohol um because i would have just i would have just been buying meals left right and center just <laughs> just just to have a beer but you you would have had to have found somebody over 18 that was willing to sit with you whilst you had a i don't know a fish fish and chips and then watch you drink a strongbow. I mean, the person who's going to like say yes to that is going to be a bit weird, aren't they? Yeah, that that's true. It's certainly a lot more difficult than when we used to wait outside a shop and pay someone to buy us beers in the shop um, because you could actually give them extra money. A bribe um, is what it's called. But yeah, um, you and I, Hellraiser, especially um, had lots of... Lots of adventures um, trying to get served, didn't we? The one oh, time God, I yeah. specifically remember is walking around Chelmsford, our hometown. We tried about, I don't know, 20 pubs, 20 bars. Every single one of them said no. <laughs> and yeah. then we just had to walk home. <laughs> I remember we went out, at, I don't know, half seven. <laughs> and then we came back and it was like nine o'clock. And your mum was still awake and she said, I thought you were going out. And we kind of had our heads down and said, we tried, we tried, but no one sold us alcohol. And then just went to bed without having drunk a drop of alcohol. I think we did get a, a nice takeaway though, didn't we? We, had, we sat in the takeaway sober together and just had a burger in silence. Yeah. Just like, what <laughs> is going on with our lives? Is this how it's going to be forever? And yeah, you know, it pretty much is. You know, the disappointment has just followed us around. <laughs> Yeah, another another life lesson, really. Yeah. <laughs> another really good life lesson. Just of life is a disappointment. Okay, so uh, so just prepare yourself for that. Yeah, we got ready. I remember we like had our best shirt on. Oh, yeah. You know, put on like lots of aftershave, which is what we call, like perfume for men. Yeah, lots of gel in the hair, thinking this is it. This is the night, baby. And then uh, just had a burger just me and you in the takeaway and walked home that was nice though i mean we're still talking about that night now so <laughs> it's a memory isn't it yeah memory um in fact the the thrill of being that age so the thrill the excitement is something that can never be replaced so the one of like walking up to a nightclub so there would be a a bouncer there so the bouncer is like the security man and then that was always the moment of thinking, oh, fuck, here we go. Here we go. And I remember our tactic was if we start talking, then the bouncer will think we're confident. So let's just start talking. But the problem was, as soon as someone said, let's start talking, neither of us had anything to say. Uh, exactly. It's pressure, isn't it? It's like when I hosted the podcast. It's exactly the same. <laughs> when you're under pressure, it, can't perform. Exactly. Like, you know, we'd been talking... All night. Notice that rock and roll grammar there. Some past perfect continuous. We had been talking all night, and then the moment where we said, "Okay, now let's talk," there was just nothing to say. So we would walk up. Okay, now let's talk. Silence, and then I think one of us would just say with a deep voice to try and make it look more believable. Um, did you see the football last night? Then fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was that was pretty much it. The, the other thing was, because um, the bouncer would often ask you um, your date of birth. Um, so say like, when were you born? And I would just be like playing that over and over in my head of just like adding two years um, onto my date of birth thinking, oh God. But then once you got past the bouncer, oh, what a feeling. Oh what my God. A feeling. It's like going into <laughs> Narnia. 
Amazing. Get into that wardrobe. Fuck. <laughs> Crazy. I'm not, I'm not sure if everyone's familiar with Narnia in the world, are they? Yes. They sh- yes, it, they should be. Yeah, is it? Okay, yeah. it's international, that one? I think so. I think they've translated it. Anyway, it's a fantasy novel uh, where they these kids find a whole <laughs> new world in a cupboard. And it's just like full of everything they could ever wish for, which is what that feeling is like going into a club <laughs> when you're underage. Just to compare. Yeah, absolutely. But you still had to hold it together, though, because you pass the bouncers, then you have to go and pay. So when you hold it together, you have to pretend that you're not excited and then you have to pay and then and then you can celebrate. And then it's just like jumping up and down, hugging each other like now we're here. We have arrived, baby. So, I mean, sometimes it was like so exciting that I could feel you just reach out and grab my hand and squeeze it as we walk past the bouncer. <laughs> and I'd have to tell you to kind of like just rein it in. Just chill out. Relax. Stop grabbing my hand. Stop squeezing yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, that is actually a true story as well, by the way. Um, so rein it in with some nice vocabulary. Just just calm it down a little bit. Um, so the last one we've got here on um, our list um, is sex. OK, because in, in England, it's quite young. You only have to be um, 16 to have sex. It says here, I copy and pasted this from the website. You can consent to all sexual activity, heterosexual and homosexual involving anyone aged 16 years and over okay because in italy it's 18 so you know if you're going between countries can be difficult can be difficult is it is it 18 yeah 18 over here i mean 16 is quite young now when you think about it yeah 18 is quite old though isn't it <laughs> maybe 17 then but i don't know there was one bit which i thought was extremely entertaining um there was a link that said, what is the definition of sex in this context? <laughs> um, and it says, um, sex means penetrative, I can't even say that word, penetrative sex, oral sex, or masturbating together. So if you're oh. thinking of having a party of just like a masturbation party, think again. because uh... <laughs> That's good knowledge. It's good to know. That's good to know. That's not legal. Okay. <laughs> That's what I always say. Rock and roll English, you learn so much more than English. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. Um, anyway, thank you as always for your time, Hellraiser. I hope you're enlightened now so you know more about what happens in the UK. Yeah. Thanks. I mean, growing up there, I didn't didn't know any of that. So really helpful. Now I'm 35 and don't live in England anymore. <laughs> well, you know... You, you never know. Just in case you move back, have children, they'll be educated much better than you were, okay? And you can tell them that stealing newspapers and women's underwear is not acceptable, okay? Okay, I will do that. Don't make the same mistakes, kids. That's what I'll say. Exactly. Although thinking about it, now I've just read this again, you can only be sort of prosecuted after you are 10 and you were six when you stole the underwear so that's the perfect time to commit that crime exactly i'm always looking for loopholes yeah sure so a loophole is like how you can just sort of move around the law one step ahead of the game hellraiser that's you always 24 7 always (laughs) always anyway thanks a lot for your time okay mate take it easy take it easy bye 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 okay so that was the hellraiser and me speaking about how old you need to be to do stuff. Um, So let's have a look at some of that rock and roll vocabulary. Um, The Hellraiser said that he had a moody belly. So that means like an upset stomach. So your stomach's not feeling very good. Maybe you eat something a bit and you have a moody belly. Um, The Hellraiser also said it was a sign of my character flaws. So a flaw in your character is... A problem with it, let's say. Um, Maybe there's a flaw in the system as well. Um, When I asked him what we were speaking about, he said he didn't know because um, I kept my cards close to my chest. So think of this as like playing poker. You don't want people to see your cards. So you keep them close to your chest. You keep it a secret, let's say. I then mentioned it took me a while to grasp how to wipe my ass. So to grasp something, to understand something. 
Um, and then I said I um, can't be asked to get up sometimes when I call Mrs. Rock and Roll English. So I haven't quite got the energy. I also said when I was five or six, I was built like a brick shit house. I don't know why we use this term, a brick shit house, but it means someone very muscly. Um, I really, it doesn't make any sense. A house made of shit means muscly. I don't know, but that's what it does mean. So if someone is really big and muscly, you can say, oh, he is built like a brick shit house." We had the word stack, a stack of newspapers. So one newspaper on top of the other. We had the word knickers as well, which the Hellraiser stole. So knickers are women's underwear only in England, I believe. In America, they don't use that term. We had the term nan as well, which is another British term, um, just means grandmother. We had the word scrunched up as well when the Hellraiser said he gave the knickers to his nan scrunched up. So when you scrunch something up, you take it in your hand and you squeeze it um, and it's just all scrunched up. I then said that um, the telling off the Hellraiser got from his mum didn't really deter him. So when something deters you, it stops you doing it. Um, We had the term shake off as well. I said that it took me years to shake off um, that horrible event of um, being in the local newspaper. So to shake it off in the sense that people forgot about it, because believe me, those were a few bad years when that came out and everyone saw it. But then about five years later, it kind of stopped, only kind of. We had the term get served as well. I mean, this is really only useful if you're under 18 and you are trying to buy alcohol. Um, When you succeed in buying alcohol, you get served. Um, I actually used a term I forgot to mention in the podcast when I said I would have been buying beers left, right and centre. So when you do something a lot, you can say, yeah, I would have been doing it left, right and centre. Um, we had the term bribe as well when um, we mentioned how we bribed people to buy us alcohol by waiting outside a shop and saying, can you buy us some beers and then take this extra money and you can just buy whatever you want? That's a bribe. We had the word thrill as well. The thrill of being 17 can never be replaced. The excitement. We had the word bouncer, which um, at nightclubs, more or less everywhere, but certainly in England, you have these security people that normally are built like brick shit houses. Um, and the name for that in England is a bouncer. Then I mentioned when you pass the bouncer, you have to hold it together. So you can't jump up and down in excitement because you have to pretend that you're calm. So you have to hold it together. Um, And then the Hellraiser said sometimes when I grabbed his hand because I was so excited, he said, just rein it in. Just calm down. Just calm down a little bit. And at the end there, I said that I hope that I had um, enlightened the Hellraiser. So when you enlighten someone, um, it's when you give them knowledge about something that they didn't know about. And the Hellraiser also said that he is always looking for loopholes in the law. So a loophole is something that's not quite clear in the law. And you can say, well, this is what I was doing. It's not clear. So you can like move your way around the law, basically. What lawyers do when they're defending someone, they look for loopholes. Anyway, remember, all of this rock and roll vocabulary is on the website, rockandrollenglish.com slash episode 201 i will see you now in two weeks but in the meantime promise me one thing just keep on rocking baby thanks so much for listening to rock and roll english for more great content and to stay up to date visit rock and roll english.com and facebook.com slash rock and roll english we'll catch you next time